Welcome to Live Action Star Wars. I'm Ralph. I'm James. And today we are discussing Caravan of Courage, an Ewok an adventure. E adventure. Yeah. Yeah. This was your pick. <laughs> it was my pick. It was my pick, and I stand your, by this pick. Your excitement for it is it's, it's catching. It, right. Okay. So I, before I ask, because usually I ask this thing, I don't remember where we landed on this. Had you seen this before? Nope. Never. I've, so you've I've, never I've seen it. this before. I've owned it in the past. I've owned one of the, they did a, and I don't know if it was over there as well, but in the UK, they did a, a DVD release around one of the many DVD releases that we got mm. um, of the two movies back to back. And yeah. of course I bought it. Mm. Never. I could never get myself to watch it. I could. Like, I could did you, was it, was it a lot of false starts? No, not even. I, it would just sit there on the shelf. And I'm do you, like, so I want... do, you just, do, do you just not like the idea of like, uh, the, the Ewoks having their own thing? Is it? A, no, what, I, what... I, I was so happy for them to have their own thing. Um, I remember when I was a kid, there was one copy of like droids and Ewoks VHS tapes at my local blockbuster that I rented and I'd watched a couple of times. So I'd seen a few episodes of both of those. Um, uh, and so I was, I was perfectly fine with it. I kind of knew what to expect with it, with it being like a, a director video movie. It was going to be a bit cheaper, a bit sh schlocky, but. It was it was made for TV, yeah. And what's what's kind of fun about this is that oh, and I should open my notes because I definitely took notes. I took um, my notes. The the, uh, the notebook of Boba Fett was officially closed. <laughs> um, there were commercial breaks, so oh, okay, that makes sense. Like like certain prolonged scenes of him trying to get out of the water mm. would have you, you can hear the music heighten and then Drop. continue. So there would be a fade out there. So this, when they released that DVD release, they took out all the fade in and fades out, fade yeah. outs because of the commercials and just strung it together. So I, like, I wonder why both movies were exactly the same length. And it's obviously because yeah. of the commercial times and the time slot that they had. Um, that that makes a lot of sense. Um, I see, I think over here, we never got that. It was, I believe they were just direct to video. So I, okay. I always just assumed that that was the release method and especially like that trailer that we put on our socials and things like that that sort of says <laughs> coming to home video and things like that i wasn't i wasn't sure that it had been released before those right. um but yeah no so they sat there on my shelf for years and years and years just unwatched and i was it, there'd be a few times where i'd be like should i and then i think i'd just put on return of the jedi instead do you think like you just wanted to the the fact that there were Star Wars out there that you hadn't seen was appealing? Maybe, possibly, it could have been. But I I, I mean, think it was a, I think it was a not wanting to be disappointed and the age. So that would have been like the mid two thousands. I think that that DVD set came right. out. Um, so I was a teenager. Um, so I, I was. I got that DVD when it came out mm. because at the time, I want to say. Star Wars wasn't out on DVD yet. Oh, it was over here. We we have few. We had a few releases. Like we had an unspecial edition of release over it, over here. Um, but I've got yeah, somewhere we in had my that life. later on. Yeah. Um. We. I. I mean. I. I got it right away. Um. As soon as I got my Apple TV, I ripped them. <laughs> cool. Fair. And uh, I, I watch them. Uh. Last night we were watching me and my wife Stevie, who's here um in the chat she's watching and mark yes mark that is fair days we'll get to that and my <laughs> sister who was driving during the first half of this and okay. she's will be listening intently to all the opinions uh, i believe this is the first time she's seen it mm -hmm. so which leads me to believe that maybe i didn't get to see this when it came out asked uh, so what was going to be my next question was did uh, you watch this i know i've seen era? it i know okay. i've seen it before i got the dvds and i knew like I was super familiar with Mace and Sindel and the I knew the names and all that stuff. I, like, um, yeah. <laughs> so it was it was always around for me, but I mean, so we're watching last night. Me and Stevie mm. are watching it, and we're both on our phones. She's playing Switch or whatever, and I was like, I was like, I wasn't super hardcore paying attention to it. Mm. And I mentioned that, and uh, I said because I've seen it so many times. You did, and she said, it. and then she responded, "Yeah, me too." 
Oh, okay, interesting. <laughs> no, but through you, that's the, that's the husband putting it on. Yep, way more than he needs to. Yep. <laughs> So, so I I tried really really hard to sort of sit through it like I was watching a movie for the first time, yeah. and I got about twenty minutes in, and then the dog was looking at me, and I think it was a "What the fuck are you watching?" kind of look. And so I was I was the on the floor playing, I was I was on the floor playing with the dog in front of the TV. So it was on, and I was watching it, but I was also playing with the dog for about half an hour. Um, yeah, and I, th- the... I think I enjoyed that half an hour a lot more than after that. It might work. Well, here's the thing. It kind of has a similar deal with the holiday special where the first half hour, you're really mostly seeing Ewoks Mm. chatting. Um, I'm assuming the narrator came in after the fact because they needed something. Yeah, maybe. Um, And then the fact that it's Burl Ives narrating. So I usually end up watching this yearly around Christmas because of Burl Ives. So what's what? What's Burr Love famous for? I don't know the name, so he, but the voice like I definitely famous, recognized. He's a famous singer, but if you've okay. seen the Rankin Bass animated film, Rudolph the Red-Nosed yeah. Reindeer, he's the snowman narrator. Interesting. That so makes a lot of sense. That as well. And yep, so it has the same sort of, like he's, he it narrates. It has that sort of Christmas special. Way. Yeah. And so, and so with him narrating, I'm, it, it gives me this like warm, like Christmas hmm. timey feel. And I think you described it as everywhere. the coziest Star Wars. Yes, it is. Um, and it and is cozy. Eventually, we'll get to the the sequel to this. Yeah. Uh, the Battle yeah, for yeah. Endor, um, mm-hmm. which is like, it's Not faster, and more intense. Yeah. They 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 bring in they bring in something that this this movie doesn't have, and I'll I'll talk about that later. But how excited were you? Did you watch this on Disney Plus? Okay, how excited were you to see the classic four by three twenty century Fox logo with yeah. the classic Lucy not, Lucasfilm logo? Not not the animated one, the old sort of just like, the illustration essentially. Like yeah, exactly. Yeah. It was it was lovely. It was great, and it it did give me the sort of those warm tinglies of oh, this is how you start Star Wars. Like yeah, it's I don't know like... with the with the Fox acquisition by Disney. That's the one thing I was looking forward to. I didn't care about X Men. I don't care about any of that. Put the Fox logo in front of the sequel trilogy. I don't need it. I've I've got no, used no, to but, I've, I've got used to it you, without. But yeah, I have. Have you seen but, people put those online? No, I haven't. Oh, I'm out people, to check people. Out. I mean, it's the easiest thing. You just pop yeah, it right of course. in. Yeah, it's right. And there. of course, they use the static shot of the 20th Century Fox yeah. instead of the moving one. Yeah. And it's just like, oh, this feels like Star Wars. It feels so much more mm. like Star Wars because yeah, you, you get that. You get the Lucasfilm logo a long time ago, and then you see. Um, uh, it's. Force I think Lincoln, it is something. It feels it's that, so much. It's different. the crescendo, isn't it? It's the crescendo, and then the okay, and everyone yeah. settle down into the it, logo into the a long time ago. And, and then John Williams hit you again. John Williams knew that 20th Century Fox logo yeah. was being used and took that crescendo and played off of it. It's the same note, apparently. Okay, cool. It ends with it, that it's that the, the music starts with. Yeah, I, I, it's almost certainly like at the same level as well. So where that one peaks yeah. out, like is where he comes in. Um yeah. uh, I, you said I, okay. faster and more intense and I didn't realize <laughs> just how involved George was in this. Like he has the story by credit. He was executive producer, but that's like part right. parcel. Um, and apparently he also edited some of the scenes of this, like, and was overseeing the reshoots and stuff. He was right there, which is fascinating. Right. Do you, okay. So uh, I've grown up, I've lived in Southern California my whole life. I've mm. been up to the Bay area I, a lot. Yeah. And I feel like a lot of this was shot around there. I, around... I was going to say, it looks like Mule Woods. It looks like the Redwoods. And yeah, I, I, I was up yeah. there as a kid. Um, I think I was, I turned six on that trip. That would have been earlier in the trip. So I would have been five years old, like just about to turn six. Um, when, yeah, I was up there. And I remember being like up in the Redwoods and everything and knowing that this was Endor, that this is where they, all of it was right. shot. Um. I, I knew that like San Francisco was George Lucas country, basically. Yeah. Um, and so I, I got to appreciate it for that. I'd love to go back now. Um, but yeah, yeah, this is very much like it looks like, you know, the, the big sweeping shots that we see of the ranch. 
it looks like you just turn the camera left and like this is where they shot all of that and i feel like that pond that mace gets trapped in is on that's the that one so that, that yeah. yeah i i feel like yeah. almost all of this is because we're we're post jedi now like they're building out lucasfilm on the ranch as opposed to like in studio city sort of thing like yeah i'm uh I, i'm 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 not gonna say i'm a defender of this thing i to- fully understand what it is mm-hmm. i fully understand there's pacing issues mm-hmm. um i feel like they're there it's it's a bunch of ewoks walking to a place but I feel like, and I feel like the issue is that there's no villain. There's no sense of urgency to get yeah. to that place. Like there's no ring rates. There's no wicked witch of the West, I, but I do like the fact that it feels like it's shot in George's backyard. It, it's, it's <laughs> like a home movie. It's, yeah. it's very much like a, uh, was it Amanda Lucas? Was it, um, who apparently really, really liked the Ewoks. And so he's mm. like, cool, we'll do some more with the Ewoks. Don't worry, kid. They're coming back. Um, yeah. and so he came up with this and I mean, you say story by, it's almost like he went Lord of the Rings, just kind of do that. Like just yeah. do put together a fellowship, put, yeah, it is. Oh, wow. Stevie okay. Says, so the sequel is more high fantasy. Yeah. In the, in the sequel, there's a witch that can turn into a crow. I've seen some stills. So we'll, so we'll get to the, we'll definitely get to the sequel. There's, eventually. That's, a, that's a whole episode um, for sure. Um, but, but the sequel is not directed by John Cordy. Who okay. directed the Lucasfilm animated film Twice Upon a Time, which nobody's heard of? <laughs> um, it, it uh, but the sequel is directed and written by Jim and oh, Ken Wheat. Okay, those are names I recognize. Yeah, they 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 are the creators of Riddick, uh, Pitch Black. Oh, wow, They're also the writers of oh, shit, I better get this one right. I'm not gonna get it right. Uh, uh Nightmare on Elm Street. For the Dream one Warriors, of... okay, I think it was it like it's like a good one. I yeah, could be yeah, wrong. Yeah. yeah. So, but they, so there's a there's a more oomph to, the, mm-hmm. to the to the second one. This one, Joe Johnson, feels... production designer on this one, right? So I was like the first credit that came up was Joe Johnson, and I was like, oh, okay, Joe, jo, because I like obviously I knew he'd worked on uh, Jedi, um, and was right. a Lucasfilm guy, but. Yeah. To see him get like one of the first credits on this, and to I mean, Almost it's like it's definitely like well George designed. Calling him up, yeah, so, saying, "Hey, I need, that, st- I need something. Give me like a hang glider. Give me a a, a, a couple creatures. Yeah, and those and those hang the, gliders <laughs> that we did as miniatures in uh, Empire in Jedi. Like, let's make yeah. one. Let's actually build one and put a guy in yeah. a suit, sort of thing. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty crazy." It's, it's insane and yeah. the shots of that are beautiful um yeah. i thought all of the ewok only stuff and like the the opening <laughs> sort of 20 minutes or so really good i really i was into it i was like this is fun um, i am <laughs> yeah we saw sort of we saw a bit more of bright tree village i guess like some of the stuff down on the the bottom where the war uh the yeah it is warwick isn't it the warwick family live mm-hmm. uh we saw some more well we saw wicket's brothers and things like that so yeah it was cute the, the yeah, um yeah. so here here's the thing like i understand this isn't the most entertaining it's definitely not the most fast paced but i got to tell you i love and this is what i wanted from the star wars stories i love there's no force there's nope. no jedi Nope. There's no Imperial Army. There's nope. the rebels. There's none of this stuff. It's literally, hey, other shit goes on in Star Wars that isn't tied to Star Wars. Yeah, that planet that they happen to be on, there's other stuff that was going on here. And also now, the forest mu- forest moon of Endor is out of the window. That particular moon of Endor is the most biodiverse planet in Star Wars. <laughs> Very earth <laughs> Centric with oh, very <laughs> horses, yep, chickens. Horses. Lizards. I mean, there's there's a it's not a mongoose, is it? Name so, yeah, horses are actually named as horses, so um, but what's what's funny about this is it's Star Wars isn't in the title, no, it's it's not and even Star the book Wars of Boba movie. Fett said book of Boba Fett, or Star Wars, Star the book Wars, of Boba Fett. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so I like that, I really like that. That it's a slice of life in the Star Wars universe mm. 
that has no ties to anything else. Nope. Uh, and... I was just, I was before just before you jumped on the call. I was I was on the Wikipedia page and I was looking at like other things in the legacy. And I I must have read uh, the Black Fleet Crisis of books when I was a kid. Can't remember them at all. I think I'm pretty sure in that series of books, like Leia or Luke find out some more about their mum, who is definitely not Padme and things like that. Um, <laughs> yeah, like that's that's I think as much as of those books as I remember. But apparently in one of those. Uh, Sindel has become a journalist and is working for the New Republic on Coruscant, oh. um, which is cute and it's kind of nice. But I would have read that. I'd have read that name and I wouldn't have put two and two together. I she is adorable. <laughs> Super cute kid. Yeah. Don't make don't make kids act. It's it's it's, it's not it's, fair. It's not fair on the kids. I, I know, I know. You could. There's one point where you could tell that they put in like. Vaseline teardrops. Yeah. Say okay. Now just be sad. But what's what I think is funny about it is, um, I feel like they didn't abuse her. They just no. gave her one take and or two takes and be like, okay, and, cool. And we're it's not on. like she had to memorize a script. They're feeding her lines. Like she's right. being fed. Now say this. Now say that. So because of that, she you know she's she could be claimed as a, an actor but i'm pretty sure that the only things to her name are these two movies and yeah. it's like cinder becomes phasma I, scott d that's a great 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 headcanon i like it so on my patreon discord he posted a thing from instagram that had this yep. breakdown of it that goes against my thing okay I, I've, I've, no, I've, what's I've your single theory about this. well no it's not a theory it's that i want a the ewok truth. adventure three Oh, okay. Have I told you about this? No. Oh, God, I I feel like I've said it everywhere. (laughs) So what I want is is First Order Era Ewok Adventure. Spoilers for the second one. But Sindel returns to Endor. Mm -hmm. She's like, let's say Bounty Hunter. Doesn't matter. Of course she is. She has to. (laughs) She has to escape to somewhere remote. So she goes to Endor. Mm Mm-hmm familiar she gets there wickets there Mm -hmm. all grown up with his kid and his kid that's it Mm -hmm. the ewoks are gone (gasps) right sad it is sad but she finds out that the first order has arrived okay with captain phasma okay and they're using the ewoks as slaves Mm -hmm. to recover the remains of darth vader yeah, cool. It makes sense. It tracks. I, I, and I, I like this being a slice of life and outside of the, the continuity, uh-huh. but it will fill some gaps. Yeah. And, and so this is episode uh, six and seven. and seven. So, yeah, this is how so, Kylo gets the Vader helmet um, and things like that. Uh, Malin Ackerman, who's who I cast as Sindel, the grown up Sindel. Um, this is this is like I, I'm I'm ready to go on this. So it's a new caravan with just the three of them trekking okay. through the jungle. But but you have villains like stormtroopers and Captain Phasma. Like Captain mm. Phasma could be the big bad. She's the big bad, but obviously she's going to get away in a sort of a, a, but, a made for TV movie sort of way of she's beaten, yeah, but she runs to Disney away. Plus. Yeah, straight to Disney Plus. The exact same runtime. It needs to be a trilogy. It needs to be true. <laughs> like I, I feel like you can like Disney Plus put these movies on their thing. They're yeah. not that bad. Um, when we get to the second one, you're going to find it more entertaining. But um, the fact that these are on here and not the holiday special, uh, the fact that George Lucas put these on DVD mm. is yeah, is it's, it's, he actually it's a, has a soft spot for him. Yeah, there's no shame associated with these. Whereas I feel like with <laughs> Is this a thing? <laughs> um, a little bit. A little bit. I could tell uh, you a story about that. Okay. Um, but yeah, there doesn't seem to be the shame that he has with this that he does with the holiday special, um, which is yeah. really interesting. It is. A, it feels very much like a, this is what this is. It Like, we know, everyone, go. you go into this knowing what to expect. This, this is, but the, the, what's different about this and the holiday special is this is on George's terms. Yeah. Yeah, and George George is producing this thing, mm-hmm. and George has access to Joe Johnston and mm-hmm. ILM because the effects look pretty good. There's a lot of matte paintings. 
and there's a lot on yeah the the paint and glass like matte painting style and, and I, I mean say what you will about like the stop motion mm. i love it mm-hmm. and say what you will about the gorax i love it but and the, the thing with the gorax is the the optical integration yeah. is amazing yeah like it's, the first shot where you see him in the trees and the works. parents down below it totally works Mm-hmm. Um, there it's, and you think like we, we can give sort of book of Boba Fett, like passes on certain things, effects wise and stuff because we're like, Oh, it's just a TV show, but this is yeah. just a TV show in 1984. Yeah. Yeah. And so like the effects are really good for that. Like you go for watch anything, TV any TV, TV thing from 1984. And... Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, well, um, I mean, when, when was Land of the Lost? Like that was before this, wasn't it? That oh, it's was like the seventies. It's like yeah. early seventies. Yeah, um, I'm, I'm trying to think of stuff that came out around this time. You have your things like Knight Rider. Yeah, um, but I can't think of any special effects stuff. I mean, there um, wasn't like Battlestar Galactica was a little bit stuff before. like that on TV. Yeah. Was there really? I don't think. Not that I can remember. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. so the yeah the Gorax at the end, like when they're in the the cave in like the the Gorax's lair, essentially. Um, that reminds me a lot of the look that Peter Dinklage had in the Avengers movies. I don't know why. It's just where they've, they've shot Peter Dinklage. They've got him all hairy, but they've also blown him up so that he's massive compared yeah. to the other characters and stuff like that. The way the costume moving... itself. Yeah. The costume itself, it doesn't scale up as well mm. as you would hope. Um, they do some slowing down. Yeah of his footage to make him look lumbering and big. It's got to be in the performance, I think. Possibly. The uh, performance is there, is in was there anyone but, listed as a as performing? In that? Man, no, I, I can't I see anything. Not, I didn't look it up. I, I, I This movie kind of just lives in my heart. <laughs> yeah, these this thing. They like, are never characters. Really they are not actors. That whole, that whole John Cordy thing I, that he did twice upon a time, I literally just learned that like, uh, like 25 minutes ago. <laughs> um it, it's uh uh let me let me go back to this real quick um so uh years ago there was a show called children's hospital great cast rob cordry rob hubel that was, that was the comedy um, mock sort of hospital show wasn't it right right yeah. children's yeah. hospital so it was on yeah. it was on adult swim um and i was in comic i was at comic con doing some stuff for media junkyard uh-huh. Uh, an old show that's long gone, but I've got a lanyard for it. Footage. Just over here, there, there's Somewhere. footage. There. There's footage of me on their YouTube page. Um, they said, "Do you want to do stuff for us?" I'm like, "Yeah, sure." Well, can can you get me into the Green Lantern and the animated series cool. uh, junket line? And they're like, "Yeah, no problem." And then I saw Children's Hospital, which I love. I said, "Yeah, cool, <laughs> yeah, perfect." So I get to interview like Rob Corddry. Cool. I think Ken Marino was there. Awesome. I was, I was pretty nervous. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I was pretty nervous, and um, Lake Bell, cool, showed up, and I don't know if her and Malin Ackerman were playing some kind of game with this line of nerds in this in this <laughs> you know in this press line, but they both got really close to the people they were in it, like <laughs> physically in close. <laughs> And um were they playing chicken with each other? It I don't know what it was, but um having Malin Ackerman about like four inches from your face is uh, leaves an impression. <laughs> I don't think I I don't think I got a decent question out of those interviews. I it was I was very it's online. I'm oh, sure cool. it's still somewhere you can watch it. The media might... junkyard, children's hospital. We'll try Maybe to put we a link for it. it. We'll put a link for it somewhere. Okay. <laughs> Maybe a bonus episode that has nothing to do with Star Wars. <laughs> it's only because of Ralph's fan casting. Yeah. Yeah, of course. Just bring back Media Junkyard for the a one time special. <laughs> <laughs> back to the special. My sister says if this was on TV in the 80s, there's no way we didn't watch it when it aired. Um I yeah, I was younger. I was this was uh, I was seven mm. uh, seven in 1984 which perfect age uh, it was, for it and i feel like we would have had a vcr and would have taped it mm. 
if you knew it was coming. But when it's Wasn't not, that a brief, played this on HBO, maybe. Oh, uh, maybe, I yeah. I yeah. saw it. I saw it a lot when I was a kid. Mm. Um, Stevie's, yeah, she knows. <laughs> she knows. <laughs> But if you look up Malin uh, Ackerman, you could see her as a grown-up Cinder. That's all I'm saying. Okay. This is it's, it's but yeah, you've got your cast thing. It'd be really interesting. Like I, from what I can see, everyone like Eric Walker who uh, played Mace, he's not really done anything since, but he seems to be fond of this. It's not like he's come out of it with like right. sore feelings for the Ewok adventure right. or anything like that. It's it's funny. You can watch his performance, and this is the stupidest thing to say about this movie, but you watch his performance and you can tell he really wants to be Han Solo. He he, yeah, he really, really he, does. He really wants to be good. I think that's the difference um between Aubrey Miller, who's Sindel, who is a kid who's being fed lines, who doesn't really know what she's doing. She's just having a nice right. time. Um, she's told to cry, I can't cry. Okay, squeeze, 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 squeeze. There you go, you're crying. <laughs> Be sad. Ask for where's where's your mummy? Um, that's it. But what, what I like, Whereas what I Eric like about Walker, that, Eric Walker's trying. Oh, he, yeah, he's, he's really, really, really trying. And it, I, but I, I, what, I what I like about it is that you can tell through her performance is that they didn't take this too seriously. They could have pushed this kid to the brink, but they didn't have to because it was an Ewok movie. It's an and Ewok so movie that's like, going to TV and as far as they knew, would probably never be seen again. Perfect. Yeah. It's perfect. It's, I, it's, it's, I Listen, every once in a while, while you're getting bored during them just walking <laughs> and you're seeing the, the fifth time that Mace is mad at a new character that's introduced or and you're then into immediately our... turns around it. You're and into hour him. three of the <laughs> Firefly scene. L- l- listen, dude. <laughs> listen. <laughs> this, you know what this movie, you know what this, this feels like? It feels like uh, uh, they're doing testing for Willow. Yeah, that's exactly like, what I thought. I was, I was, couldn't remember what year Willow was. It was 85? 87. Eight, oh, wow. Okay. It's the same age as me. So, so yeah, now here's, this is here's 100% that... tech demos. Warwick Davis is like 13 in this. Mm-hmm. Warwick Davis is 17 in Willow. It's crazy. His it's it's nuts. Yeah. Like he was a huge Star Wars fan, made it into Jedi, made it into a major role because he could stick his tongue yeah. out of he he made the, the suit look better. Yeah. So they're like, oh, put him in. And he just went on this trajectory. And I love that he loves Star Wars. I love that he loves this and he's, everything he's done with Lucasfilm. He's just um, owned it. And it's it's and so he, charming to see. He's great in this. Yeah. He's not like the main character. He's kind of a sidekick to Sindel. And because he's not part of the adventure, he doesn't oh. go. They leave him back with the kids. He gets left. The in, yeah. He gets left they, in before the, like the main action scene. But it's perfect. Yeah, he's more he's, the lead. He's more the lead in the next next one. Uh, makes sense. I, do you do? Do you know anything about the next one? I know. I think. It, I think it was. Uh, was it Tommy, or who was it that said on our Twitter account, um, "Don't get too attached to these characters." <laughs> I I I I know that Sindel is more of a major character than um, Mace. Uh, does Mace die like right at the start with the parents? Am I right in thinking that? All three Don't... of them get killed. Yeah, I thought so. In like the opening minutes, yeah. it's awful. Like, <laughs> like you know, I feel bad for Eric Walker too. Yeah, because he seemed to be but the like, fact that into he's it. Still, but the fact that he still likes these, it's great. Yeah. It shows yeah. that he doesn't. He's not like has. He knew any again. He knew what he was in. He was like, I get it. It's yeah. everyone remembers the cute girl. Yeah, but it's great um the gorax can i just talk about i i meant to mention this do you remember the ralph mccory artwork of the gorax uh, peeking up yeah. over the yeah. the ewok platform that's why i like the gorax because it's mm-hmm. a macquarie design mm. and it's yeah. faithful to that it's faithful to that drawing it's just like if you were to do it now you would either do it cg or you would do it where you'd be able to do the optics so he looks it's slower and menacing but um um the did you ever play i want to say it was the force unleashed 
This is me yep. talking about video games. Uh, in the yep. Force Un- I believe it's the Force Unleashed. Someone can correct me if I'm wrong. Um, you go into this, you're in this jungle and you go into this um, sort of uh, uh, safari outpost and mm-hmm. there's a bunch of skulls uh, trophies on the on the walls and that there's tracks. a giant trophy in the middle of a gorax head oh wow i and don't I remember like, that when but I, yeah that the, that makes sense for that game definitely and those uh, before like you could share the cave. yeah mm. the the cave mm. and the spiders and stuff they are in one of the battlefront games i think um when you're in endor probably animated well yeah instead of Be- a lot better like than this yeah. it's my least that's my Static least favorite part puppets of this. as well that don't don't move it's my least favorite thing in this yeah and it, it comes at a point where it's like okay we're at the gorax lair let's just move forward the gorax like, should be the threat thing. not some spiders on a, a climbing yeah. frame rope and that's that's my that's my issue with this is it's it's always any of the action in this is just a random threat it has yeah. nothing to do with their journey that's why i wish that like the gorax had some sort of like minions that go and collect people yeah smaller ones it's like his kids or something yeah. even like it could be anything yeah. yeah and they could be on the trail of the ewoks or something um okay that my favorite just while, oh. we're, just while we're there with that spot that spider scene though um that canyon and the platforms on either side of it you take the the netting out and that looks identical to um last crusade indiana jones the last crusade the 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 leap of faith yeah. the bridge walk and i'm just this would be yeah. a little too soon yeah oh yeah because that was 89 made... wasn't it so yeah, yeah. they would have made this around the time of temple of doom mm. so possibly Which some elements or maybe yeah, Who knows? yeah the the gorax cave looked less futuristic star wars and more just like average once they started what cave. once they started on their journey it all started to feel very like lord of the rings with the putting the exactly the the fellowship together and everything like the picking Giving up the, the gifts the muscle getting the gifts especially go on what you got chukatrock you not the muscle uh, he's chukatrock and yep. chukatrock is a fucking badass chukatrock yeah. is like is like the black chrysanthemum of ewoks ewoks yeah absolutely and, that's exactly what i thought and dies yeah and it's a super bummer and what's funny is like mace who hates everybody knew that they come across he can't stand anybody yeah he's um, angry. which i think he does one too many times like yeah. start trusting he walks but i kind of wish that when he hated chukatrock and he threw the he threw the um the axe and chukatrock throws the axe in the handle of his axe yeah like i feel like Instead of him being like, okay, you're a great warrior, like right away, I feel like their rivalry should have gone throughout. They should have done something else. And then at the else. end, when he dies, he says, you're my friend. But yeah. the fact that he immediately says, oh, you're a great warrior, and then they're friends. And then Chuka of... is the one that rescues Sindel as well yeah. on the tree when Wicket screws it up and scares the horse off and things like that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wicket, Wicket on that tree is going to be a gif in our gif room. It's adorable. Like who hasn't grabbed a branch of a tree and bounced? Like that's yeah. exactly what every kid does when they're climbing a tree. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but Chukatrak, uh, pour one out for him. Yeah, um, the only he's rad. The only death in this. Yeah, it's yeah. the only death. Yeah, even yeah. yeah, the parents make it and everything. So it's weird. I thought the parents were gonna die in this one. I thought all would be dead in this one because I knew that they were dead. Like basically come the second one um yeah we we had a comment very early on about those parents though and something very close to ah oh like what we like uh right here oh, oh we clicked we've it both done it at the same, same time. time yeah go for it yeah okay i'm gonna uh, mark there we go. you can turn it off when you want it there you go <laughs> Um, so oh, Mark, wait, he, I hit the wrong one. Just, that's okay he only watched it for the first time last year i only watched it for the first time yesterday um and yeah, yeah, Daniel Faraday's mum uh, from Lost. Uh, Fiona Flanagan, is it? Is it Fiona? Fiona. 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 I don't know. Daniel Faraday's mum from Lost. Um, right. Is Zindel's mum also? It. Yeah. Yeah. 
Okay, um, so let's let's put this. I don't know. I guess they say their name is Tawani. But I was gonna say, let them let's let's figure out how Eloise Hawking made it to this in her travels. But I, mean, I don't want to get into that. But if no, but I was if, gonna uh, say that there's some island, there's some island magic, you know, from from underneath <laughs> the church with the, the pendulum. She's definitely getting to Endor. If Sindel and Faraday are half brothers and sisters, is that is that another another Faraday Faraday sibling? Is that of a could third be. one? Is it a could be. penny penny in there as well? It doesn't start with a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away. We don't know how <laughs> old Ewoks get, so this could take place during Lost in two thousand seven so... or eight. So this, when they were filming this, the kids were told that, and everyone involved was told that it's like 250 years after Return of the Jedi. Oh, but really? then, yeah, but then they changed it. And they're like, well, it, Wicket looks exactly the same. Uh, let's just make it somewhere in between Empire and Jedi. Um, Do I but then, this up. But is, then they forgot, there... they, they forgot how to speak basic because they definitely learned how to speak some basic in this. Oh, boy. Oh boy, hold your hold on to your hat for the oh, second one. Th are they are they wicked? Are they it, it, just wicked. Okay, oh, that's better because wicked okay. wicked has a relationship with Sindel, obviously that's been going on for a while mm -hmm. after the first one, and so he speaks a lot more English than 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 you would want. Yeah. But dude, like, come on, Star Cruiser Crash, like that's classic. It's fun. It's, it's like fun. so classic. They're, like bits like that, I have no problem with, and because they are, they're always saying words. You know, it's, it's yeah. whether it's Martin Short, that guy's smart, or whatever. It's like, it's they've always sort of seemed to be saying words, and they're looking at each other. So it's not like they're they're dogs who you just assume a language. Like these, the Ewoks are always talking to each other. So to be able to pick up on like human words or basic whatever you want to call it like that's fine and they're there it's imitation and you got the classic scene of teaching a scene uh, like teaching a language to uh, any sort of foreign body it's when mace is just there shouting at them medicine medicine i'm just like kid he's they're not going to get it just from that like show them show them what you want and then he does and then they pick up he's, he's very yelly mace is yeah, very yelly he's, yeah um i the that would be great if and when they make let me make mm -hmm. part three to have a grown up Sindel speak Ewokis, yeah, like we've seen and, and Han have, speak a little bit of Shiruk, yeah, and then have Wicket speak a little Eng a little English, little bit, just basics, just names, like, names like that, then, names and things. I'm fine with, but then just do the Han and Chewy thing, yeah, where you get from context what Wicket is saying through her reactions and uh -huh. make it like that. Um, uh, I, I don't know, man. I, when I was younger, when I was a kid, cause return of the Jedi came out when I was six. So I liked the Ewoks. Uh -huh. Okay. Uh -huh. But then I grew up around teenager and like, fuck the Ewoks are stupid. Um, and then you see clerks, you see that scene in clerks where he says Jedi was just a bunch of Muppets. And I'm like, mm. yeah, that's right. And then when like the special editions came out, which were, I think we're coming up on the anniversary of the special edition for Return of the Jedi, I'm like, yeah, okay, no, I like the Ewoks. Yeah, There's no reason I like why Ewoks. I shouldn't like the Ewoks. I've, I've always and, liked the Ewoks. And uh, I love the special edition thing, or I guess it was the the Blu-ray version. DVD where they did the or Blu-ray, wasn't it? Yeah. Where the they blinks. did the eye blinks, um, which I was really missing in this because it's you're getting weird, a lot more close-ups of Ewoks and their eyes are like really, really big in this, and it's yeah. a little freaky. Like there's that classic and it animated just holds gif holds on them as well. Have you seen that animated gif of Wicket with his arm around Sindel, just looking like this? I uh, know, I don't think so. Oh yeah, oh yeah. It's <laughs> it's it's pretty classic. I think it's from the second one, but okay. it's their eyes are so big and lifeless. I feel like <laughs> I feel like Warwick Davis is the only one actually putting life into these suits. acting and it, it, yeah. it's, as you said like he was able to get his tongue sort of out a little bit so he became the star but he <laughs> so very silly. much and even in this he still is wicked it's not like he's just put on a suit and he's doing something else yeah. he's the way he's moving his 
his sort of bubbly nature and everything, he's still playing that same character, even if it's just through pantomime, basically. Like, yeah. he is wicked and he's doing that same character. Mm. Um, someone who isn't the same and does have a different look was uh, Logre. We see, we yeah. see Logre. Uh, we go to Bright Tree Village, like the main part of it that we saw before. Um, we go see Logre, and he's got his skull thing. He's got his like medicine man look, but it's a different face, isn't it? It's definitely a different look to I the think face. So yeah. Um, so that threw me a little bit, but I was like, okay, cool. I like that we're seeing more of these guys. Um, like no, no Chief Chirper, none of the others. Um, right. But we get introduced to new ones, which is nice. Like I yeah. like that it's, and then we get like um, Deej, who I've been watching Night Court, and the guy who plays Deej plays Dan Fielding's boss. Oh, really? On the show. Okay. It, and he's played by a little person, and of course yeah. Dan cannot deal with that. Um, so that's kind of fun. Uh, Scott D says was just looking at that creepy gif. Yeah, it's hilarious. It's hilarious. <laughs> um, we'll, we'll definitely put that up on social as well. Yeah. Um, yeah, uh, I thought it was, I thought the new characters were cool. Well, I thought the, uh, Chucka Truck was a kid. I didn't like the, the wizard. Um, I thought, I thought she looked cool. I, I didn't like the hood. It just bugged me. Oh, you didn't me. like it? No, I it, don't, I it don't know It kind of reminds me, it, uh, I kind of, I, I think they had toys of her and that I want to say she, she may have cartoon? showed up in the Ewok. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah. Uh, listen, my, my. My interest in animated Star Wars or lack of interest in animated Star Wars goes back to my childhood. I did not watch Ewoks. Um, I tried to start watching Ewoks um, on Disney Plus when they were released along with this part of the yeah. part of the Star Wars vintage collection. Which I believe was last April. So we're, yeah, we're nearly it, it, a year into was, that. It was rough. Yeah. Oh, so I, last I April is the last time I watched the Ewok Adventure movies because okay. I wanted to make sure that Disney Plus knew that I had an interest in this stuff. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, and <laughs> like, that's the last time you've watched them. This, but you've had them on a loop ever since, just so that you can get their numbers right. boosted. Yeah. Um, and every time you've list. you've sent you've sent feedback, just saying I have I have an idea. Hire me. <laughs> oh, man. oh man. Well, I, I'm I, I I'm content knowing that no one's going to beat me to the punch on this. So, I mean, uh, yeah, I don't think I don't think many people are chomping at the bit to make the the third one, right. um, but I also don't feel like you'd have any trouble putting together a crew. I really don't. I think a lot of people would do it like just on specs. Sort I of think they'd do it for fun, right? And I feel like there's no pressure. No, like if I it's make not even it, gonna have the Star Wars game it, on it, and it's it? kind of bad. Yeah. People are like, oh man, how did they get it? Just like the old ones. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I would. Would I do it four by three? I would want to if they'd let you. If they'd let me, and I yeah. and I could pitch it. I could say, hey, listen, we're gonna need some digital map paintings. We're gonna need need a lot of digital map paintings, and doing it in four by three is gonna cut costs. And I I just need access to some of the hills around the ranch. Zack Snyder does stuff in four by three. Wes Anderson does does stuff in four by three. This is uh, WandaVision was in four by three. Like this is this is art. Four by three is art now. <laughs> it is. It's gone. It's gone full circle, isn't it? It's like people buying cassettes again. It's like yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, just give it to me. What? What's the worst <laughs> that could happen? I mean, literally, with this, it'd be like you know, yeah. You don't ever These release are, it. These these Ewok movies are at the bottom right corner of the list when you scroll on Disney Plus. Mm -hmm. No one's gonna notice. You don't have to. You don't have to announce it. Just, you, you just, just show there. up down there. You just put just a third there. Ewok adventure there. Yeah. <laughs> Can oh, you God. imagine? <laughs> That's the yeah. surprise drop for yeah. May Fourth or whatever they want to do. Yeah. <laughs> uh, um, so it, it's, let's uh, let's talk about let's talk about Mace as a name because that is another one of those yeah. names. Um, like Kira, like um, uh, all of these sort of Lucas created names, uh, older on Corellia, all of Bale. these Bale, um, I mean, Antilles, just in general, like um, uh, Sky, not Skywalker, but uh, Starkiller, things like that. These are mm. all Lucas created names that he almost basically jot down. Yeah. 
and then we're like well, I've, I've, i want to do something like that but that mace was like i believe in one of the original scripts was like obi-wan's character i think or something like that or was I some no i think it was a jedi um i used to have a copy of the star wars is that the it dark wasn't horse journal, it wasn't journal of the wills no uh, uh the script <clears throat> oh okay of the script oh wow okay the one that because yeah. i know just before they they lost the license dark horse put out a a comic adaption of it like when they did the whole thing and i was still working at uh, a comic book shop at the time and sort of i flicked through it and i was just like i don't i don't need to read this i don't need to i don't did they, did i don't want this story designs it was based on those yeah. yeah um which was cool so you had like you know the the sh the shield and lightsaber effectively like stormtroopers and things like that um cool. yeah it was interesting but it felt very much like a oh our star wars stuff isn't selling too well at the moment and yeah. if we're ever going to do this now's the time because we're probably going to lose this license back to marvel um yeah but yeah it was interesting yeah. i like that it exists but it wasn't anything for me but i'm pretty sure there is a mace in there i just thought it was kind of interesting that it, he'd he'd done all the movies that he thought he was going to do at that point and he's like i've got this name just go with mace and yeah. it wouldn't surprise me if cindor was another one of those like character names but i like that i mean i like around. it because it's it's funny you look at like there's nobody else in the galaxy named leia there's yeah. nobody else in the galaxy named luke like i like that there are there, new, there are two bends and, there are two bends and there yeah. are two maces yeah and the um, two maces can be any further away from each other as yeah far exactly as characters go uh, they're both they're, they're both a bit aggressive <laughs> <laughs> right <laughs> they're both dead they're both, yeah they're both dead i mean spoilers again <laughs> i mean maybe I mean, this, maybe this, <laughs> you'll see you'll see it's like okay. i mean is there ambiguity I mean, with this mace death like people try and force mace windows ambiguity well i mean they have a life monitor still in the oh, okay yeah and i want to say i want to say it's just Sindel looking at her family lights go out oh wow as they're being as they're being hunted down by marauders great cool <laughs> brilliant so yeah th th that short description sounds way more entertaining mm -hmm. than anything in here but i can't stress this enough i under fully understand the pacing of this thing but it doesn't bother me because I get to be in Star Wars, yeah, and not yeah. have to deal with sort of. lightsabers yeah. and stuff. Yeah, I like the I like the slice of life. This is, is just something that is happening at some point in time. It doesn't matter at all, um, right. and that's a good thing. I feel like with the action in this movie, you can split this up and turn it into a serial. I mean, if very like you saying that it was uh, like a TV special with ad breaks, I can see them like. Like yeah, trapped under the water in the middle of the firefly thing, um, like that. That really that was like the scene it? that almost no, that was the scene here? that really nearly broke me, and I was nearly like, I, really, I, I, yeah, it just I went like it. on. It just went on, and I like, I there's there's stuff that I really liked about this. All the opening stuff with the hang glider and mm. all of the stuff in in the redwoods and Muirwoods sort of stuff. I thought was great. But what do you what do you think of the giggle fairy, <laughs> the giggle eater, as she calls it? Yeah, as a, like a design, it was cool and like the way it's sort of almost glitching around like on his hand and stuff like that. Yeah, um, it was very Tinkerbell. And I think they, I think the effect was cool. You can tell that they had some sort of source light. Yeah, in the room. Yeah, casting um, shadows and stuff. I think it was really well done, and I really think that this is sort of Lucas had the idea for Willow. It, and was using this like as a proof of concept, like, hey, yeah. let's see if we can do this things, thing. things that they wanted to do, tech things that they wanted to do for Willow, um, being used. I mean, perfect opportunity. Like, you've got something. See how people, see how audiences react to it. Um, see yeah. how it looks on camera. Um, also, yeah, you get cool. Warwick. You get Warwick more used in front to of the camera to get used to. It's like it really feels like, especially you'll see in the second one too a lot of the design stuff kind of looks like willow uh mm -hmm. i feel like the the stop motion monster at the beginning that attacks them mm -hmm. at the tree stump yeah i feel like that looks the very low yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah those those haven't shown up in star wars again but in the second one we get the blurgs 
Yeah, I saw the blurgs. I've seen some screenshots, and the blurgs look yeah. giant as well. Like they look like they're much bigger blurgs. Is that right? Or maybe they're and maybe the in, in the indoor blurgs are bigger. They just got a really good appetite. They got like really yeah. like blurgs in their natural habitat, <laughs> possibly. Um, yeah, but again, bringing back blurgs is always cool because it's in the same way that I like seeing the name Mace and things like that created. Yeah. It's like yeah. these are designs that have been around forever, and they've now sort of made their way all the way through in so many different formats yeah this blurgs are always on tv also... yeah yeah and my alexa does not things... like blurgs apparently oh that's there you go i uh this is this is a couple of reasons i picked this was a because it shows you what we kind of had in dark times yeah um and and what people complain about speeders speed of oh. colors and 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 voice modulators for luke and stuff like that we've got um, good looking star wars almost every week people like right and also what i like about this is that it shows you it shows you where we were mm -hmm. but also like this is a thing that like i'm probably in a very small group of people that actually really really enjoy this thing like it's it's sort of widely known as that dumb thing yeah and what's great about this dumb thing that i like is nobody talks about it. it nobody be... goes and nitpicks and complains about it. It's just, it exists. I'm so happy it exists. And I like that it's a Star Wars thing that I can enjoy yeah. without being reminded of all these Minox that are just sucking the joy out of it. Yeah. And it, it, it makes me happy. It reminds me, it makes me feel more like a kid than Star Wars does. Because I mean, I grew up watching Star Wars my whole life. But this I watched when I was a kid. And then yeah, I, and then that was going to be my thing. Out. It's like I think I think if I had watched this as a kid, I would feel yeah. a lot more fond of it. Yeah. Um, Anyone you wouldn't like I, as a kid, you don't think about performances. You're just happy to see a kid in Star Wars. Absolutely, or like Which, yeah, and even if you're up until this point, this is the first kids we've seen in Star Wars as a, as the leads. Anyway, as the focus, yeah. I, are there kids in the original trilogy? Uh, running around on, I mean, no. Jawas are performed by kids, but not kids. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're not they're not presented as kids either. Like you have like the baby Ewoks. Yeah, I think that's the closest thing. So for for being a kid and seeing a kid running around in Star Wars when you're seven years old, you're like, oh, this is. Yeah, I want to be. I want to be a kid that hangs out with Ewoks, and that Definitely. movie. This movie gives it to me. I uh more positive things that i can talk about yeah i thought it looked i, I thought it looked pretty good um mm -hmm. i thought i mean you shoot anything in marin county and it's gonna look nice because it's just yeah. a, a really nice looking place and it's very photogenic uh i thought the costuming was pretty solid across the board cindal looks yeah. super 80s and everything but it still fits into <laughs> star wars yeah. um yeah. i mean you look at the the imperial officers in a new hope and they look like they're straight off the street in the 70s so it's like being of their time is not a negative yeah. that's that's absolutely not uh i really like mace's costume apart from the shoulder pads were maybe a little bit too big but that you can play as a case of he's a kid he's wearing mm -hmm. clothes that are probably a little bit too big for him if he got a bit bigger grew into it a little bit more the shoulder pads wouldn't look as pronounced so again in universe reasons for it um but yeah no i i thought it was cool the parents' performance is both felt a little bit stilted but the dad especially he was almost just like he gets recast but, but he oh okay so it's the same character but that he's recast for the sequel for the sequel he gets recast by the, killed he's the guy yeah right away he's the guy the the principal in the breakfast club plays oh, the dad in the second one and cool. he's on the poster yeah which is very yeah cool. like right in the, the center of minutes. the poster right it's yeah and he he dies like in the first two seconds and it took me forever to figure out I'm like who is this yeah and i looked at the costumes and i don't think the costume is even so, remotely near what i i looked at it and i was like well did eric walker have like a big growth spurt between the first and second ones as he like this a hero bit, shot but not but yeah yeah <laughs> yeah oh, interesting man. i mean i as much as i thought it was schlocky and silly i like i didn't hate it and i, I no. i'm not opposed to and i look forward to down the line doing the battle for endor um okay. on so you're Black not House gonna pick it sure. you're not gonna pick it for next episode i'm not gonna pick it for next week no but <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> we'll get there we'll get there i'll leave that one for you oh yeah 
<laughs> oh yeah, we'll get there. We'll get there. Don't be surprised if it's my next pick. <laughs> <laughs> uh scott d scott d who predicted that i would pick this which was yeah. insane has a prediction today for your pick um i'm gonna pop it up here i i, I don't i can't imagine this would be it did scott it's, d pick your pick it's not it's not it's not um okay. at first like when but i was just I looking at the something? comments down the sides go on i've never seen this video i've never seen this video we're adding I've it to the list seen... scott oh um, it's it's on the list Oh, it's already on the list. Okay. And right. here's the thing. Here's the thing. Like we try to shy away from when it comes to Star Wars, we try to shy away from um, fan films. I think there's one. There's only there's, one fan film on there. There's and one that's, that's on Hardware there. Hardware Wars. Oh, there's okay. There's two then. Uh, troops it's is troops? also on there. Okay. Yeah, I, I um, added troops on there because it's. I feel like it's a classic, and it's those it's are a dark fan times film. stuff. It's it's dark time stuff, and it. I feel like it, troops, especially then, it was produced and played out in a way that is like, this could slot in to mm-hmm. the actual canon um it was a big deal it was a big deal um yeah it and then fun. so i don't know i don't know about um, i feel if there's a way to get around this this whole youtube copyright thing i wish there was a way we can do a live running commentary for the saga be- the saga begins the weird Al video mm um live i mean we'll have to have a look uh <laughs> jay's, jay, here. jay's here with the last last couple of minutes of the episode um i didn't He's... like it quite as much as ralph but i still thought it was silly and fun hey no one will no one will like it as much as me <laughs> no one will ever like it as much as me um there's there's probably somebody at lucasfilm that likes it as much as me yeah and are is trying everything they can do to get a third one um, that's your only competition i think as to who's going to yeah. produce that third one yeah me. yeah there you go um me. <laughs> but talking about next week uh it is my pick uh, it's my first one back we've just done something from the dark times uh and we are now officially in the the run-up to uh obi-wan kenobi the series in may end of may so i'm going to pick something with a little bit of ewan in it um we're going to watch train spotting two uh which is actually a no, we're not. We're not watching Transporting 2. Um, I'm like, I'd have to watch the first one to watch that. Oh, they're both good. <laughs> they're both really good. I like the sequel. Oh, yeah. Um, no, we are gonna watch Star Wars within a minute, making of episode three. Oh boy. So we haven't oh, covered boy. we haven't covered Revenge of the Sith yet, but we're gonna All do right. the making of first, and then maybe a little bit after you, we'll do you, Revenge you, of the Sith. You know, you know I love DVD features. I and I do too, and it's one that isn't. So this, I had a look. It's not on Disney Plus. Oh, um, is but it, it is. A... It's readily available on YouTube. Okay. Um, all you need to do is put in that title. Uh, we'll be tweeting it out. We'll share a link because we can just share a link directly to the YouTube video that we're gonna watch. Um, in fact, it I is... will put it. I'll put it in our show notes on YouTube. Great. Um, so you I guys watching live? That's a place where you can see so, things. But yeah, you can see it just straight in our show notes. Um. It's. It, I remember watching it as the DVD came out. Uh, I don't think I've seen it since 2005, though. So it'll be fun to get back to. I've seen it a bunch. I've uh, yeah. See, I've, I've, I've those ones from. I think I've watched the episode one and two ones a bunch, but I don't think I watched that one more. Maybe I watched it a couple of times. But this is an interesting. Remember. This is an interesting documentary of the of the prequel ones because the prequel ones were pretty much straight up documenting the whole film. Yeah. This documents one scene. Yeah, it literally documents like one minute of Star Wars, uh, uh, of Revenge of the Sith, and goes through Everything every goes into... single uh, department and how they like the opening of it talks about like you know it's it's sixty seconds of finished footage, but it's this many effect shots, this much man power, like these are the the man hours that have gone into this sixty seconds, and it's it's a really good look at what it takes to make one of these sorts of movies um i liked that with the prequels they didn't do the same making of documentary every time i think all three of like the main making ofs the official making ofs of those movies were all different and they all sort of focused on a different thing Uh, i mean the one for episode one is very raw and i think shows a lot of the problems that that film had that one i'm gonna i'm gonna try to get a guess for so we'll yeah, have to figure yeah, that out. Yeah, we've got that one. That. We've got that one coming. And up. I feel like I feel like we should definitely 100 percent hit that before 
Kenobi. I I mean, I, I I'm gonna try to I'm not gonna say that we're doing it every week or anything like that, but I'm gonna we'll pass out there'll be there'll be plenty of you and McGregor, Obi Wan Kenobi before we get to Obi Wan Kenobi the series. Yeah, and I still I, I'm still gonna do the review of awesome. this as a bonus episode for those listening. Mm-hmm. I held up a Obi Wan episode one and two lightsaber and you will be able to watch that video at liveactionstarwars.com which is our youtube page that will be a uh, exclu- exclusive mini episode perfect so check that out there um anything else i got nothing are you happy you finally watched it Would, i are am you, are you is it was it as bad as you thought it was going to be? Was it it's, better it's than on, you thought it was going to be? It's on par. It's exactly where I thought it was going to be. It's what I was expecting. Um, right. There were elements of it, and as it started, I thought this is better than that trailer. Um, but then, like after it, I yeah, I was just at the end of it. I was like, yeah, this is about what I expected. Right. Cool. Uh, Jay does not want to watch the uh, the Obi Wan lightsaber review out of jealousy. <laughs> um all right we're gonna take off like i said live action star uh that's our youtube page subscribe please mm-hmm. subscribe mm-hmm. I, I tell I, everyone else to subscribe we're getting a we're getting a couple a week which is good but we really want to hit a thousand mm-hmm. um so as soon as we hit a thousand we could start monetizing this thing and we can get james to celebration so that's yeah. that's the goal that's yeah. the goal. Um, and then follow us on, on socials at live action SW and get all those links at live action SW dot com dot com. So there it is. my brain was good. like, Ralph, you have things to do <laughs> Websites. before we close this live stream. <laughs> Open up those tabs. But before all <laughs> of that, no matter what you thought of this uh, made for TV movie, don't give me a tight. And Ralph is going to say, celebrate the love when he comes back from being muted. There he is. He's back, back, everybody. So don't give us a hate. Um, Celebrate the love. Punch it before we lose it. Yeah.